And I want to thank X5 for providing the AT1 prior to release so that I could test it and provide them with my feedback. This is not a sponsored video and my opinions are my own, but what I'll do is I'll go through the features and controls and I'll show you how it works with a few different cables. Now before I show you a few tests with the AT1, let's talk about the features and controls. And first of all, this is all metal construction. This is very solid. It's meant to be hauled around between gigs, banged around the studio. You know, it's brand new, but I expect durability is going to be really good here. Now looking over at the side, first of all, there's the USB-C charging port. Again, most up to date, the C format. Comes with a USB-A to C charging cable, but you can use any USB-C cable to charge this, even charge it from a portable battery pack. Although I have to say, I've used it for hours and hours and the battery has not run down. So um, this is, you can expect to get like a whole gig out of this or use it all day in a studio for a major setup. Something like that's not gonna be a problem. And we also have a volume control on the side that's gonna adjust output through the speaker that's built in but also through the headphone output on the front. So if you need to monitor the signal in a little more detail, you can use in-inner monitors, or you can also use headphones. Then we get a power switch here too, I'll slide it on. And you see that we get LEDs light up on the front right away and they stay lit. So there's no danger that you're gonna leave this on, forget about it and run the battery down. Now on the other side, we've got our LED indicators for cable tests for XLR. So we can test all the pinouts and make sure everything is wired properly and also connected. So on the front, you're going to see, of course, both ends are XLR in and out. And then at the top here, we've got a quarter inch TS jack that also works as an input and an output, depending on the mode we're in. More on that in a little bit. We also have that headphone slash in-ear monitor connector here. There's a couple of indicators for phantom power, and this does phantom power test, not only for whether or not there is power, but also it'll give you an idea of what voltage range you're in. And it's above 44 volts or below 44 volts but anything under 24 is not going to read on here so it's not for testing 12 volt phantom power now we also have uh, indicators here the top indicator tells us what kind of test signal we have and if it's solid it's pink noise if we push the button it'll start flashing that means that it's going to be one kilohertz tone underneath it we have the output selector and when this is yellow we're getting signal going out through xlr when i push this it'll change to blue that's gonna mean signal is going out through the TS jack on here. So we're gonna be able to test different signal paths if we want to. Also again, when I push this in the output through the TS mode, you see I can select here, flashing means one kilohertz and back to solid is pink noise. So we have that there. You can also adjust our output level here, minus 10, minus 20 and, uh, and, and minus 40 on here. So really good to see there. There's an indicator here for peak or just signal coming in as well. So, uh, you know, a lot of, quick and easy ways to see what's going on uh, and, and make all the tests that you need to do. So to get started, we'll take a look at the audio test tones that are available. So I'll put the accessories aside. Comes with this uh, quarter inch TS to TS coupler, which is nice to have. And also this really great carry case and it's got a really solid belt clip on the back. So, you know, if you want to again, carry this around a gig or if you want to use this in the studio, take it with you everywhere, that's nice to have. So what I'll do for this is I'm going to go ahead and connect up just uh, directly to my converters here so you can hear I'll plug this into the headphone jack and I'll turn it on and we'll start out here with the pink noise and I'll just turn it up and it can get very loud so no issues there I'll just switch it over to the sign signal And so as you see, I mean, we get that test tone, no problems there at all. We can use that to easily send signal through any path we want to. Again, we can get that output coming from the XLR or from the TS or the headphone output. So we can select and we can, we can use it with basically any kind of signal that we want. And of course, another test you can do is just simply use this to send output down the XLR. So what I've done here is I've connected this out to one of the inputs on my converters. And when I turn it on, you'll hear the signal. And again, we can choose whether we want to have a sine wave at one kilohertz or pink noise. Now we'll take a look at some of the most common tests, which is the XLR tests here. So I'll go ahead and I'll just take a short XLR cable and I'll plug it into the inputs and outputs. And I'm going to turn this on and I'll switch the output over here. You see it says yellow on here right now. That means XLR and I'm getting a signal through there. Now I can turn the volume up. I've left this connected to my converter so I can let you hear actually what's going on. And one of the things that's great here is you get the pink noise, but if I switch this over to the sign sweep, 
you know, now you can start to move the cable around. You can listen, you know, for microphonics. You can look for connectors that have, you know, weak, weak points in that. There's a lot of things here that by listening to what's going on, it's not just a matter of is there power going through or not. You can just test the integrity of your cables. So that's uh, one of the first things with this. The other thing you can do, of course, is you can test to find out if all the pins are wired correctly and working. So the way you do that is you press and hold the type button and I'll flip it over here. And as I hold it, you'll see now it's gonna go into this test mode. And as long as it's showing side-by-side -side LEDs on each one, it means your cable's wired correctly and everything's connected. And again, you could move the cable around and look for weak connectors there, but I really like to do that with the audio test tone. Then to disable that, you just simply go ahead and hold that down again. It's gonna eliminate it and I'll end up getting a test signal again. I have it turned down here right now. Now, another thing you can do with this is test for phantom power. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just plug another XLR cable in here. And this one is bringing phantom power once I turn it on. So I'll turn the unit on again so we have it there. You're not gonna hear anything here. And we'll look for the two indicators as I switch phantom power on. And there we go. Now we have the indicators and you can see they're both lit, which means I have more than 44 volts and this is 48 volt of phantom power. So that's what I expect here. And so it's really as simple as that for testing it. That also tells you if the wiring is correct right off the bat too. Now, of course, we can also do some tests with a variety of TS cables. So I've connected a cable here up again and I'll use the output on the front here, again, connected into my converters. And when I go ahead and turn this on, as soon as I switch this to output out of the TS, you can hear, and it's gonna be one channel only because I'm bringing this out just into a single input. But here's what you get. You have that signal that's coming through running directly into my converters. So I know this cable is working well. Again, I can move the connectors around and see if there's any issues with that. So that's a pretty simple way to test it. But we can also do some other things that are a little more unique here. If we don't wanna run it into an audio system, we just wanna do a freestanding test. And so beyond testing the TS cable by simply outputting a signal from the AT1 into your interface or mixing board, you can also do it on board just using a couple of adapters. And so what I'll do is I'll just bring in this cable which gives me XLR to TRS. I'm gonna plug that into the output from the unit here. Now, if I wanted to test this cable, I could plug it directly into the front and turn this on. And again, I've connected the headphone output up here again so you can hear the signal that's passing through. Of course, it's there. So I can test it that way and do the same thing there, but I could also go ahead and simply use this. And if I say I've got a coupler I wanna test, well, I could plug that in. Then I grab another cable, plug that in, connect that into the front of here. Once again, power it up and see if I'm getting signal. Again, I can move all these connections around and see if there's any issues here, you know, any crackling or otherwise. This is, uh, you know, this away here, in this case, I'm testing two cables and a coupler all at once. Again, not helpful for identifying individual ones, but if I have known good working adapters, I can hook up a few other types of cables for this. So that's a useful way of dealing with this. And really, whether it's through a loop or directly out of this into an interface or mixing board, you can test all kinds of different adapters to get really what you need, you know? So it's just about endless here as to what you can do to verify the signal either just with the unit on its own or into a system. And once you've tested all your cables, you can also test other gear. So here I've got a DI box and all I have is a cable running out of the output here on the AT1 into my input on the DI. And then I'm bringing my XLR back out of the DI. So we'll bring that back into the AT1. And you see right away, I'm getting a signal here. I'll go ahead and I'll ramp the, the level up. I just have this connected again into my interface through the headphone output so you can hear the signal and switch over to a tone if I want. Again, I can go ahead and I can work on all the conne connections and see if there's any issues with any of the cables or the box itself. And so really sky's the limit. Here it's a DI box, but it could easily be a mixer or any other device you need to connect. So a lot of flexibility here with the right cables. You can test just about anything. Now, the last thing I'll mention is the output level, minus 10, minus 20, or minus 40. These are actually very accurate. I've tested them with the inputs on my converters into my Orion and I'm getting what I'm getting. So again, if you wanna use this as sort of a very rough calibration of signal levels as well, or to see how much signal loss you're getting over a long cable run, this is gonna help you do it. Like anything, you could connect up a short cable, say to a mixer, 
connect up a five foot cable, see what the level is, and then go ahead and connect up your 100 foot cable and see how much your signal loss is going to be. You could compare one cable to the other. That's not scientific, but it's sure a fast and easy way to see where signal loss might be coming, especially in a big live venue where you got a lot of cabling. Now that I spent some time with the AT1, I'll give you my final thoughts. And I have to say, first of all, this is very durable. You can take it with you anywhere. I've used it on a live gig as well as doing a major studio cable project I've been working on and no issues whatsoever. Plugging, unplugging all the time. It's just been durable. It's just worked when I needed it to. No issues with battery life. You could use it all day or all evening and it's gonna get the job done for you. So from that point of view, I highly recommend this. If you have any amount of cables in your studio, you're swapping things in and out, you've probably already run into a situation where why isn't it working? What's going on? What am I doing? And you start tearing things apart, do all kinds of work for nothing when it just ends up being a bad connector or a bad cable. So really, if you do any kind of work with audio cables, this will also work with DMX cables. You gotta have one of these. A cable tester is a must in your toolkit. And if you're looking for more ideas for your studio or live performance, check out one of the videos on the screen. As always, of course, I appreciate you joining me. I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you next time.